Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm just going to make a few books, and I'm actually going to make them out of several different mediums or materials. And dolls, in some ways, my method of making books is rather unorthodox and possibly even rogue, but it's what I do. I use spare shingles, I use cardstock, I use random pieces of wood, I use foam core. Over the years, I've even used cardboard. Very seldom do I actually go into making pages. Now, I have cut the spine out of magazines and I've stacked little pieces of paper together. Although books with pages are really cute, I'm really not doing that today, dolls. Now, it really is cute to have here and there. So I have a few open books laying around open where you can see the pages and the print. I'll have to do that on another video. Today I'm just trying to get some books together and I had all these spare pieces of cut off or leftover pieces of shingle from when I was doing another project and I thought they were the perfect size to use in between some book covers I had. Now, I do make my book covers. This is one type that I make. Now, these are actually just cards, simple card stock that I'm cutting and trimming to size. I also have used fabric before. I use wallpaper. I use all sorts of things, dolls, to make my books. So I just want to show you some different ways today just to open your imagination and to help you see that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Oops, sorry. No cats have been skinned or no animals have been skinned in the process of making this video. I'm just trying to say that there's no right or wrong way. There are lots of ways to do lots of different things. And I'm just going to give you some examples of some of the ways I've done them over the years. So I've stacked a few shingles, so let me allow them to dry. Now I do have on hand some book covers that I printed off of a website. I don't have the name or who I printed them from, but I've had them a couple years. So these are the spares left over from some of the original books that I made a couple years ago. And I'm just gently wrapping them around the wood. Now, some of these I'm going to have to size them or size my wood up because some of these book covers are pretty small. So I will have to adjust the size of my insides for the book. So that's something you definitely want to do beforehand to make the process a little bit simpler. Now, you see that one actually fits really well. So I'm going to need to paint that little piece of wood and shape it around there. Now, dolls, I don't do a lot of trying to round the spines off. Like I said, my method is a little bit rogue. Now, these are a few of the stacked shingles that I glued together. I'm painting them sort of an antique white color and allowing them to dry. So they will look like pages if you look at them from a particular angle. And so while those are drying, and I did do a few where I added like a binding around the back to cover up some of those rough edges. And I'm using some clamps to hold them while they dry. So these are the books that are too big for the printed cover. So I do have these random pieces of watercolor paper and wallpaper scraps. So I'm going to utilize some of these to be my book covers. So Daz, you just take the watercolor paper, cut it into a strip and cut it to the width of whatever your little book insides are so that you can wrap it around. Now, if it turns out to be too big, just trim it down some. If it's too small, you will have to choose another piece. Now, what I do like to do after I've actually put it onto the body of the book, I cover it in Mod Podge because it seals the paper and actually kind of gives it the look of leather. Now, as you know, I love the idea of mixing things up. So I use some little cutouts from some wallpaper tiles and things from an old dollhouse catalog. And I cut them out to use them as decoration on the covers of some of my books. Now, these type of little things, they're not necessary dolls. They're just kind of fun. I just look for interesting patterns or borders from tile or pictures off the wallpaper. So dolls, I'm just letting you know that you're only limited by your own imagination because books and things come in all different shapes, sizes, colors, 
prints and patterns, especially modern books. Now, if you're doing older or vintage books, you may have a few limitations, but I do have some ideas for that too. So here is some nail art, their sticker art, and I thought some of those look really nice and vintage. So I'm using them on some of the darker colors like the green and the red and just sticking them to the outside of the book. And dolls, literally, I'm not really using any rhyme or reason the way I put them on there because from a distance or on a bookshelf, they really won't be that noticeable. But I think a little glitz and glimmer from the gold of the stickers will just add a nice dimension to any bookshelf table or dollhouse scene. Now, some of the nail stickers that had kind of a scrolly type design, to me, it looks like cursive print from a distance. Wow, does anybody remember cursive? <laughs> so now that I've gotten to this stage, I have a nice variety of book covers that are printed or mass produced and the ones that I made from wallpaper scraps and watercolor paper. Now I've gotten to the point where I just want to age them and distress them a little because I would imagine an old rooming house would have books that may have been donated. People may have brought them and left and they had been passed on from one resident or guest to another. So I just want to just add a little time to these books. Now, if you want your books to look like they're from a bookstore, then you probably want to skip this step. But I'm just adding a little bit of my alcohol and acrylic paint solution just to some of the corners around the edges, a few of the pages. Now, dolls, I will say that this aging or distressing process definitely works better on papers or fabrics before you seal them with the Mod Podge because the Mod Podge will seal them so they won't really take on the dirt and grime that you're creating when you do the aging process. So definitely be mindful of that to do this part before you seal your covers. But they turned out good. I think the um, alcohol and paint wash really helped to distress them took the white off the edges and to help the pages look a little bit more vintage like the books were older and not brand new. Now dolls I also use some little dabs of distress oxide here and there too. And dolls you see here I'm not doing all the books I'm just kind of picking them up at random and putting varying amounts of the distressing on them kind of in a random way because I don't want it to look like they're all old but I do want it to look like there's a mix of old and new books. Now, if you notice, some of the books that you see in this picture or in this frame are larger. I made them a couple years ago and I was using a different technique. So I will do a, another video at some point showing that particular method as well. Now, at minimum, dolls, even if you don't want your books to look old, I would advise to use this method to knock off that white edge around the perimeter of your book covers so that again they won't look white around the edges because that looks just kind of stark and odd. So dolls more than anything I just want to encourage you to use your imagination and use whatever supplies you have on hand to create your books and anything you're making in your doll house to make it interesting and uniquely yours. Steer clear of the sea of same. Now dolls, if you've enjoyed this video today, definitely let me know in the comments. Also like, share, and subscribe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now dolls.